Okay, welcome everyone. So in this video, we are going to return to our example of a Markov chain that we use to model results for an election. And here we want to make predictions way out into the long run. And so maybe for predicting elections, this might not be the best use of Markov chains because the conditions for this election cycle might be quite different for in the conditions for the next election cycle. But let's consider this example just to illustrate some behavior that we may see in these examples that we model with Markov chains and see how this behavior is connected to this property that we've proven that stochastic matrices have an eigenvalue of one. So uh, to refresh ourselves about the election model that we're looking at, um, we had a uh, three different states based on uh, how a person can vote. So they can either vote for a Democratic candidate in an election, a Republican candidate in the election, or an other candidate, meaning uh, not a Democrat or a Republican. And these are the only three options. And this transition matrix where the first column is 0 0.7, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, these entries add up to one. First column is a probability vector Column two is 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.1, and then the other column three is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So this matrix we call the transition matrix. Every column has entries that add up to one. And for example, in this first column, this 0.7 tells me if someone votes for a Democratic candidate in this election, there's a 70% chance they vote for a Democratic candidate in the next election there's a 20% chance they vote for a Republican candidate in the next election, and there's a 10% chance that someone who just voted for a Democrat is gonna change their vote to vote for an other candidate in the next election cycle. Uh, so let's kind of review how we can make some predictions um, one, two cycles out into the future and then far off into the future. So let's imagine we have an initial state vector x0, which is given above, which tells us the results of the current election. So let's imagine that 50% of the voters voted for a Democratic candidate, 45% of the voters voted for a Republican candidate, and 5% voted for a candidate who was not a Democrat or a Republican. Then we predicted what the results would be one election cycle later by taking this transition matrix, multiplying it by x0 to wind up with x1, which happens to be 0 0.41, 0 0.475, 0 0.115. Then to make a prediction for the next election cycle, we then use as our current state x1. To make a prediction for x2, we multiply x1 by this same transition matrix, and that gave us a vector out, which was 0 0.369, 0 0.4965, 0 0.1345. So this told us, this first entry, that the Democratic candidate is predicted to get 36.9% of the vote in two election cycles, is how we can interpret that entry, and similarly interpret uh, the 0.4965 as the percentage of the vote that a Republican candidate would get in two election cycles uh, in the future. So let's say we want to make a prediction out for what is going to be the result in 10 election cycles from now. And again, we might not want to make such a long-term prediction in politics, but um, for this thought experiment, let's see what happens. So in this case, we would take the initial um, state vector and we're going to apply this transition vector 10 times over, which is equivalent to multiplying this initial state vector by p to the 10th power. And there's a link below to in, in the description of this video to a Colab notebook that does these calculations. So calculating this gives us a vector of point. 3221.5350.1429. Let's see what happens if we were to go 20 years out. So now we're going to multiply our initial state vector x0 by p that's raised to the 20th power. 
and uh, we can see the result is uh, 0 0.3214, 0 0.5357, and 0 0.1429. And then let's go another 10 years out. So if we wanted to make a prediction way out 30 election cycles from now, we can see that the result is no different than what the prediction was for 20 election cycles out. So we kind of have this limiting behavior that as time goes out to infinity, as the power k goes to infinity, we see that x sub k, the result that we get, the prediction that we get, is approaching a constant vector. In this case, we approach the vector 0 0.3214, 0 0.5357, 0 0.1429. So there's something special about this vector that is giving us a prediction for the long run behavior.